We've heard a lot lately about a specific gene editing technique known as CRISPR. That stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats, if you want to know. And CRISPR has really pushed this field forward. It makes it possible to alter specific genes and to make the changes heritable, which could be used to cure or even eradicate many devastating genetic diseases. Jeff Axt is senior editor at The Scientist, and she was at the summit in Washington. So I asked her to sum up the good, the bad, and the potentially ugly aspects of gene editing. So there's a lot of promise. And at the most basic level, we can use this technology to just edit genes, which is something that we've been doing for a long time, just not as efficiently. And so there are, um, you know, we can treat diseases. There are dozens of gene therapies that are in clinical trials that are nearing their way to approval. And they, they can, you know, you can knock out the receptor for HIV to help you know, cure HIV and make, make so, so they can't infect T cells. We can edit genes that are mutated to cause disease. But this is not really where the concerns are. So one of the big concerns is with editing the genomes of human embryos. And back in April, a Chinese group did this. The NIH then said they wouldn't fund this type of research, and it started all these discussions about when, when and how should we use this technology. So it's the germline editing. That's really where the concern is. What does that mean? Describe that and what the problems are. So the issue there is whether you're editing uh, an embryo or a gamete that's going to make an embryo to, to bring about a genetically engineered human. When you're genetically modifying the egg or the sperm or the, or the embryo, you're genetically modifying the whole human, as opposed to just going in and tweaking some of the cells of the liver that are carrying a mutant di- you know, gene that's causing disease to fix liver disease or whatever it may be. It's the germline editing where you're going to give birth to a, an entire human that carries this genetic change that you've induced. So obvi- the obvious knee-jerk reaction is designer babies. You know, If we're editing the genomes of human embryos, we can just make whatever babies we want. Let's give them blonde hair, blue eyes, intelligent, long life, strong muscles, all of those things, this genetic enhancement. And there are obvious concerns there. Several re- speakers referenced Aldous Huxley's Brave New World in terms of government totalitarian control. There was a whole talk on eugenics. So these are like the, the big fears, the fear-mongering issues. But there are even human germline editing, the one that is causing all these fears, there are real applications for that as well. So for example, when it comes to IVF screening, and you want to screen to make sure a disease is not passed from parent to child, for example, that's a real use of this technology. We can go in and just change the embryo so it doesn't have those bad genes. And this is years and decades into the future. We have a lot to learn about this technology. But there are real ways we could do it in, in what I, I think most people would agree is, is ethical and worthwhile. In terms of gene editing, how much of this is already happening and in use, and how much of this is future talk? This is pretty much all future talk. So the closest we're at um, to using precision gene editing technologies uh, in, in medicine today would be those gene therapies I mentioned. These are currently going through clinical trials, but they've used other types of technologies to edit their genes. Most of the stuff that we've talked about just now is is far into the future. There's so much that we don't know about this technology. There's really a lot of basic research that still needs to be done. So near future means what, five years, 10 years? Uh, yeah, I, I guess that would probably be a good guess. So the, the gene therapies are still in clinical trials. Um, and so it's probably going to be another few to five years before we even see any gene therapies approved at all. And once those are approved, you know, people, researchers are going to start incorporating the precision gene editing technologies to make those therapies more efficient and effective. So yeah, maybe 10 years at the, at the nearest to, to see some CRISPR application in medicine. Um, and that's, again, not, not touching on germline human editing, which would be years and years into the future. Gene therapies got off to a rough start with trials that went terribly wrong, and then it came kind of to a complete halt. How does that history play into the excitement that we have right now? It's a really interesting point. Um, certainly, there, there were a lot of deaths and a, lo- a lot of cancer cases that seemed to stem from the gene therapies. And one of the problems there was um, off-target effects, essentially, when, you, when you, um, you're causing 
uh, a disruption in some other gene that then causes cancer. And that's absolutely one of the things that researchers are looking to, to improve upon with CRISPR and other precision gene editing technologies. And even, you know, now that those are more precise, they're still looking to improve upon those even more. So certainly there are lessons to be learned from the gene therapy field uh, in terms of off-target effects and, and patient safety.